Shalom, shalom. Praise the Lord. I hope that it's well with you wherever you may be. Thank you so much for tuning in. Thank you for listening to this podcast. I know and I do believe that you're going to be blessed from wherever you are. You're going to be blessed because God's word and uh, it's we get to be equipped by the word of God so that we can be found excelling in every good work. So let us not live a life of taking the word of the Lord for granted. For the Israelites, they had the same word but they did not benefit from it because they did not mix it with faith. And so I pray and I hope that each and every one of us, every one of God that shall follow listening to it, let your life always be found mixing it with faith. For we walk not by sight, but we walk by faith. And without faith, it's impossible to please the Lord. So live a life of pleasing the Lord by exercising, by not only being hearers of the word, but also doers of the word, word, by putting, uh, by mixing the word of God with faith, so you can be found benefiting from it. In that faith, uh, it's by faith that we overcome the world. It's by faith that we overcome the world. So I pray and I hope that we shall live a victorious life. We shall live a life uh, of being set apart. We shall live a life of being people who are always uh, ahead of others because we are having faith. Faith is our advantage and also the Holy Spirit is our point of advantage. So I'm going to, today is the second sharing of the bapti- about baptism. And I know in the WH, any one of us are going to be blessed. I hope that you are blessed by the other broadcast and, and that you're going to be even more blessed and that there's more blessing in the Lord. Don't take it for granted. So let us pray. Almighty and ever living Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I'm grateful for yet another opportunity you're given unto me to first sharing your word with your people. I know and I do believe that your God who has a word for each and every one of us, oh God. And dear Lord, Father, let us speak your word. Let it go in a way that it shall be found being over blessing to the hearer of the word, oh God. Because each and every one of us, we have different needs. Each and every one of us, we have different uh, desires. And I know and, I know and I do believe, oh God, that your God will never gather some people in vain, oh God. But two or three shall fall gathered in your name, shall fall being in the midst of them. I being at this side and them being at the other side, oh God. God, and when they do believe that Jesus Christ is the center of it all, oh God, let them, uh, let them, let Christ be revealed unto them. Let this word, of, let your word be seen in our hearts and be a fruit in our life. And this is a prayer of faith that we pray in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen, amen, amen. And so, uh, turn with me to the, uh, to the story of the, uh, to the, where Jesus Christ was baptized. I, I read it the last time. I read it was in the book of, let's look at Matthew chapter 3. Uh, Matthew chapter 3. Uh, verse 20, uh, Luke, sorry, the book of Luke, Luke chapter 3, verse 21, it says that when all the people were baptized, Jesus was baptized too, and when he was praying, heaven was opened. And so we surely know that the heavens opened, in that the heaven, uh, heavens were rendered open, uh, in that uh, God tore the heavens apart. That's it, it's in one of the, it's a prophetic thing that was, uh, that one of the prophets got to share about it. And so, uh, he rendered render the heavens and come down. It's in the book of render the heaven and come down. I should like, like, like love the Bible because the Bible is a, it's a, the Bible tends to um, God the Father introduced to us God the Son. And God the Son later on introduces to introduced to us the Holy Spirit in that they are a family that introduces each other. It's in the book of Isaiah chapter 64 verse 1. Isaiah 64 verse 1. Isaiah 64 verse 1 is saying that all that you would rent the heaven and come down, that the mountain would tremble before you. All that you would rent the heaven open and come down. And so here, after Jesus Christ was baptized, we are seeing an important thing that he was doing. Jesus Christ was praying. And it says that, uh, Luke 3, 21, but it says that, and as he was praying, heaven was open, as he was praying. And so, uh, that is the same thing about each and every one of us. Us wanting to live a life of having an open heaven, us wanting to live a life of having the angelic activity, it's all dependent upon our life of prayer. Our life of prayer is very important. Yes, Jesus Christ was baptized. Then the other thing that we're seeing happening is that Jesus, that, that while he was praying, the heavens opened. And this, and the verse two, and the Holy Spirit descended on him in in bodily form, like a dove. And a voice came from heaven: "You are my son, with you are, you are my son, whom I love. With you I am well pleased." And so here we are seeing of God the Father speaking, and that His audible, His voice was heard by everyone who was there. "You are my son, whom I love. With you I am well pleased." And so we are seeing in that 
uh, the water the water was used to bear witness to our Lord Jesus Christ. The water was used to bear witness to our Lord Jesus Christ. Turn with me to the book of First John. I turn with me to the book of to the book of First Peter. First Peter. Uh, it's there. Yeah. I turn with me to the book of First John. First John chapter five verse six. It says, "This is one. This is the one who came by water and blood, Jesus Christ. He did not. He did not come by water only, by but by water and blood. And so we see Jesus Christ. He came by water. And so what does it now mean coming by water? In that for me, I believe is that how he was announced. How do we how do, how, do, how did everyone ask God to know that Jesus Christ is the Son of God? In that a voice in heaven, as a voice from heaven, the dove, the Holy Spirit came in the form of a dove, landed on Jesus Christ, and then we hear of um, we hear of a sound that was given. And we hear of God speaking, not a sound. And the voice of the Lord was heard. In that this is my son whom I love. This is my son with whom I am well pleased. Uh, I don't want to paraphrase it. Uh, let me just read it for you. You don't have to turn with me there. I'm going to read it for you. You are my son whom I love with you. You are my son whom I love with you. I am well pleased. And so Jesus Christ, he did not only come by water, but also by blood. Blood, uh, for me, I believe it's about his crucifixion. It's a cru crucifixion about, about, of, our, of our those darkness for three hours, those darkness for three hours. And then, and then uh, from, noon, from noon to 3 p.m., those darkness. And that's when she, uh, there's, a, there's usually a video by Joseph Prince. He shows of is an, an it's an animation of what was of the transaction that was happening, of the transaction that was happening, and and what made uh, Jesus Christ say that it's finished. And so it took and and also then later on one of them so just was there he said that truly this is the Son of God, truly this is the Son of God. And so for me I do believe that Jesus Christ by the water baptism and by the blood in that His death on the cross, life here on earth. Let's continue on to read. It says that he did not come by water only, but by water and blood. And it was, and it is the Spirit who testified because the Spirit is true. Verse 7 says that, for there are three things that testify. There are three things that testify. One, the Spirit. Jesus Christ, when he was uh, saying that, I, not, I, do not, I, do, I do not testify about myself, but there's one who's testifying about me. If I was testifying about myself, then my testimony could not be one which is trustworthy. But because another person testifies about me here, here, he was referring about the Holy Spirit, was testifying about him, then his testimony was legit. His testimony was legit. For there are three that testify the spirit, the water, and the blood, and the three are in agreement. The three are in agreement. You know that um, uh, we, the three are in agreement about our about Jesus Christ being whom He said and uh, whom uh, He was. When the angel of the Lord appeared, angel Gabriel appeared to uh, to Mary, and and then Mary said, "How will this be? And yet I know no man. How will this be? And yet I know no man." In this life, uh, yes, there's a system of man, but we serve God. And then the angel of the Lord told him that. There's nothing impossible with God. Everything is possible. There's nothing impossible with God. And let, then later on, he told, the angel of the Lord told him that the spirit of the Lord shall come upon him. The spirit of the Lord shall come upon you, and the, and the power of the Most High shall overshadow you. The spirit of the Lord shall come upon. The spirit of the Lord shall come upon you. The spirit of the Most High shall. And so you are seeing here the spirit, the water, and the blood. The spirit in that Jesus Christ being born. And Jesus Christ being born, it shall be a virgin with a child, the Son of God. The water and the blood, the three are in agreement. Uh, the three are in agreement and so I hope that each and every one of us has got it to know and to understand about it and so turn with me to the book of uh, First Peter First Peter, yes, um, the, the other time when I was sharing the other time when I was sharing about baptism I talked about Peter Peter in that when he was at Cornelius place the bear is in the book of Acts chapter 18 uh, not 18 from the book of Acts chapter 8 uh, Acts chapter 10. From the book of Acts chapter 10, we see of how the Holy Spirit of God came upon Cornelius and his household, and each and every one of them got to be baptized. And then we see of the of the statement that Peter gets to make in that of Peter, the house of Cornelius got to, um, got to be baptized by the Holy Spirit. Then we see the statement that Peter gets to say in that if these people have been, if these people have been have received the baptism of the Holy Spirit, what keeps them from being baptized with water? And also in the book of Acts, in the book of Acts, Peter, full of the Holy Spirit, he was with boldness. And then he told everyone, uh, uh, those people who are there, the 3,000 that I mentioned, the 3,000, and the message of grace is all about us being saved. And then he told them, that, and then he said that, repent and be baptized, repent and be baptized. And so let's turn to the book of First Peter chapter 3. 
First Peter chapter 3, verse 20. Uh, yes, I'll, I'll, I'll mash up some things. Uh, from the book of First Peter chapter 3, verse 20, say that to those who are disobedient long ago, when God waited patiently in the days of Noah, where the ark was being built, in it only a few people, a few people, eight in all, were saved through, through water. Uh, I've ever shared, and then, and then I say that eight, eight is the number of new beginning. Eight, eight is the number of new beginning. When the Lord cleared the wicked generation during the time of Noah, in that He set up, in that there were eight people who are in the ark. The ark is a symbolism of salvation. The ark is a symbolism of salvation. The ark is a symbol, and then it's our, it's, the, it's God who shut the door of the ark. It's God who shut the door of the ark. And so here we see eight is the number of new beginning. Joseph Prince, I guess to share, share, get to share, uh, saying that, uh, saying that. Mm, get to share saying that uh, Jesus Christ when he's erected that was like on the eighth day it was on the eighth day that was uh, like a, a new beginning because the Sabbath day in the Bible is the seventh day uh, and that's in the, according to Jewish culture it was Saturday and so Jesus Christ erected on Sunday and so Sunday it was like you can if you can count it like na- numberly giving them numbers Jesus Christ died on, um, in that seven on the Sabbath day then on the eighth day he was erected that was a new beginning now you got to, to be in a new dispensation I hope that you're calling it. So there were eight people who were saved by water, through water. Verse 20 says that this water symbolizes baptism that now saves you also. This water symbolizes baptism that now saves you also. Not the removal of that from the body, but the pledge of a clear conscience towards God. And so what's the importance of baptism? What's the importance of us being immersed in the water? And this reminds me of the time that I was to share about my baptism, the way I got to be baptized. It was back as 2017, 2016 there. Uh, it was, yeah, uh, 2017, 2017, 16 there. And then on, on the day that I was baptized, in that people usually have different experiences on the day that they were baptized. Some people just move, get out of the water feeling cold because it's really cold water. For me, I, I didn't experience anything uh, when I was being baptized. But I was going, to, I was going for an event at Gatron Castle, and so I took, a, I bought a, a Nissan. I went to get bought a Nissan, went to a place that's called Soilo. Then I waited for a, a, a Nissan to come that would take me to us at that place. I'd never been to that place again. And then the vehicle that came was a vehicle that was heading direct to Gatron Castle. It was heading directly there. In that, if they, if uh, in that, those, if I could buy any other Nissan, I could have elected somewhere. Then took a. Either motorbike or walk to the Gatun Castle. But on that day of my baptism, there came a vehicle that took me directly there. For me, that was a sign. <laughs> uh, yes, uh, it's for me. I don't know what happened uh, for you during the day of your baptism. You can share with me, you can leave a comment there of how your baptism was. And so, and so it's usually for a clear conscience towards God. A baptism is all about when, when we get to be immersed in water, that's when it's like a make, make, making a a public a, a public declaration a public um, proclamation that we are dying to sin and then we're being when you're being gotten out of the water that, that, that that's like a life to rashness i'm dead to sin a life to rashness here peter says that uh, and this water symbolizing baptism that now saves you also not the removal you see i uh, 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 picture this with me the story of noah the story of noah and also the story of noah uh, uh, the story of Noah, we all know it, it's in the book of Genesis. Uh, if you maybe uh, Genesis chapter 7, um, around there. Genesis chapter 7. Genesis 7, 8, 9, uh, it's all there. And, and see, God wiped away a whole generation. So what does baptism to us by immersion means? In that, there's a, there's a, a, a life of wickedness, a life of, uh, of, of offering a body to sin in that now it's dead. And now it's wiped away. Now it should no longer be there. It should no longer be there. And the same thing about the, gener- the wicked generation that was wiped away. In that day, the Noah in the ark and the water is a symbolism of a baptism. In that, it says that, and this water symbolizes the baptism that now saves you also. Saves you in that now you have been set apart. Now the wages of sin is death, but the, but the gift of God is eternal life. Now for each and every one of us, you have received an eternal life. For each and every one of us, now we ought to live a life in righteousness. Because now we shall not be condemned because of our sin. The book of Romans says that for now there is no more condemnation for those of whom are courageous, who walk not, not in accordance to the flesh, but in accordance to the spirit. If you walk in accordance to the spirit, now there is no more condemnation. For now you have been, you have, you have received life. 
and the same thing i hope that you sing of that beautiful wonderful picture because uh let me just continue on reading he said that not the removal of that from your body but the by the pledge of a clear conscience towards god it saves you by it saves you by the resurrection of jesus of jesus christ saved by the resurrection of jesus christ in that uh if if, if we have been crucified with christ then we have also been if you have been crucified with Christ, then you have also died with him and also you have been resurrected together with him. And now you have been having now you should have living a life of having a, a, a clear conscience towards God. A clear conscience towards God is a life of righteousness. It's a life of now, now you are now you the world behind me, the cross before me. Living that kind of life. But so to say that who has gone in heaven and is at the right hand of right hand and the angels and with the right hand with angels authority and power is uh, in submission to him and so i hope that we're seeing of the beautiful thing that uh, that is brought by baptism and it's my prayer my heart is that any one of us shall be baptized in the book of uh, romans chapter 6 verse um let me start verse 1 he said that uh romans 6 1 says that what shall we say then shall we go on sinning so that grace may increase certainly not you see, as in, yes, we are living in a wicked generation. Yes, we are living in a time that it may seem as if everyone, as if, uh, as if sin is on the rise, as if wickedness is on the rise. This is a beautiful thing that I want you to realize that that uh, that grace is more than sin. Grace is more than wickedness. Grace is more. Six one is say that what shall we say then? Shall we go on sin so that grace may increase? Certainly, by as we say that by no means. We are those. We are those who died, who have died to sin. And how do you know that by the baptism? In that is usually a symbolism. I've watched of baptism in churches by Bethel. Bethel in that they usually have like a um, a tub, a tub full of water. And then now uh, on a particular Sunday, they dedicate it. The present worship are singing worship song that, that that tells them of the confirmation of the that uh, that tells them of what they are doing, dying to sin, no longer living in sin, and living to righteousness because of our Lord Jesus Christ, alive, alive in Him, the direction of power. And then people immerse in water, some people come out full of joy. You see it in their face, the joy, the freedom, the release, the life in that, the understanding of it all. And I'm looking forward to churches having that. By no means, we are those who have died to sin. How can we live in it any longer? Or don't you know that all who were baptized into Christ were baptized into his death? all of whom were baptized into christ yes there's a difference between baptism and the baptism by the holy spirit baptism by fire by baptism in water all of those are different all of those are different different in the book of hebrews in the book of hebrews uh, shall we continue on hebrews chapter I'm gonna check it out for you later on uh, but uh, let us continue uh, Romans 6 3 say that or oh, don't you know that we have been we who were baptized into Christ were baptized into his death we are therefore we were therefore buried with him through baptism into death in order just as Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of God we too may live a new life live a new life so I'm hoping that you're seeing the picture and now whenever someone is being immersed in that is a uh, we therefore buried with him through baptism into death in order that Jesus Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of the Father. We too may live a life, live a new life as five. For if we were, for if we have been united with him in a death like this, we will certainly also be united with him in a resurrection like his. For we know that our old self was crucified with him so that the body, so that the body ruled by sin might be done away with that we should no longer be slaves to sin because anyone who died has been set free from sin anyone who died has been set free from sin so visually like a symbolism of you so that you can get to understand of what has happened now if we died with christ we believe that we also live with him for we know that since christ was raised from the dead he cannot die again death no longer has mastery over him the death he died he died to sin once and for all but the life he lives he lives to god let me be verse 8. Now, if we died, he's talking about us with Christ, we believe that we will also live with him. For we know that Christ, 
that since Christ was raised from the dead, he cannot die again. Death no longer has mastery over him. The death he died, he died to sin once for all. But the life he lives, he lives to God. In the same way, count yourself dead to sin, but alive to God in Christ Jesus for self. Therefore, do not let sin rule. Do not let sin rule. In that, do not let sin rule. It's we as we have in the power, do not let sin reign, sorry. Do not let sin reign in your mortal body, so that you do not obey its evil desire. Do not offer any part of yourself to sin as an instrument. Do not offer any part of yourself to sin as an instrument of weakness, but rather offer yourself to God as those who have been brought, brought from death to life and offer every part of yourself to him as an instrument of righteousness. For sin shall no longer be your master because you are not under law, but under grace. Hallelujah, hallelujah. So I'm, 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 I'm hoping and I'm, I'm hoping I do believe that you're seeing of the wonderful picture of the wonderful thing that is being, um, of the wonderful thing that's being uh, portrayed to us, being shown to us. And so uh, in the book of Hebrews, Hebrews, Hebrews 10, the book of Hebrews 10, Hebrews 10 verse 19 it says therefore brothers and sisters since we have confidence we enter the most holy place by the blood of Jesus by a new and living way open for us through the curtain that is holy and since we are great priests sorry not that fast <laughs> but I hope that you have understood about baptism by immersion I hope that you have understood baptism by immersion it's something that each and every one of us should, should be baptized not a matter of your church I remember the day that I told my parents that I was uh, even the day I was baptized, I was so excited and I wanted my parents to be there to witness it. But they sent my brother. My brother is the one who came on the day that I was baptized. He's the one who was to he was a witness. Uh, I don't know where those photos went. <laughs> I would really, really like to see them. But the day I told my parents that I was baptized, they were very, very happy. Even though in our church we don't do that baptism by immersion, but my parents, when I told them that I did it, they were very, very happy. And that is the same thing to each and every one of us. That is the same way, like I shared in the other sharing, that Jesus Christ took himself to be baptized. So it's something that each and every one of us should just decide when you know of his benefit, when you know of why you should do it, then go ahead. In the book of Colossians, chapter 2, verse 12, it says that having been buried with him in baptism, in which you were also raised with him through your faith in the working of God who raised him from the dead having me buried with him in baptism and so how do i know that i was buried with christ is by baptism baptism is what shall I mean, is it's a it's a public confirm it's not that i think it's not, it's not a matter of you being given a certificate uh, for me i've never gone back for my certificate but it's a thing for each and every one of us just to know that you have been buried with christ and so you live with you in the book of first corinthians 10 verse 16 it says that first corinthians 10 16 says that Is not the cup of thanksgiving for which I I participate in the blood of Jesus as it now that that looks so holy communion. Uh, but I hope and I do believe that you have been blessed. I saw Jesus Christ saw the disciples go into the world and make disciples in my name, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and teach them how to obey this command that I've given unto you. So baptism is something for each and every one of us. I hope that you have, have to have a clear conscience, the symbolism that you have, that you have, um, you have, been, you have been buried with Christ, and so now you live um, with him uh, in righteousness for the glory and honor of his name. And so that's it for today. If you're not born again, I would like you to repeat. If you're not born again and you like to receive Jesus Christ as the Lord and Savior, because it first starts, it first starts by um, by asking, repenting, as receiving Jesus Christ as the Lord and Savior. And that I hope that you remember that when Jesus Christ was going to be baptized, in that he told John the Baptist, in that do this so that all righteousness shall be fulfilled. 
all righteousness shall be fulfilled. And so what's righteousness? Righteousness is a right standing with God. And so how do I, how do you have a right standing with God? You get to have a right standing with God by receiving Jesus Christ as the Lord and Savior. That's how we get to have a right standing with God, is by receiving Jesus Christ as the Lord and Savior. Our Lord Jesus Christ, when he went to be baptized, he told John the Baptist that baptize me so that all righteousness shall be fulfilled. So what does righteousness mean? Righteousness is all about having a right standing with God. And so how do you, how do I get to have a right standing with God? We get to have a right standing with God by accepting Jesus Christ as the Lord and Savior. The Bible says that for I am, the, for we are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. We are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. So that's what it means by repenting. Repenting is mean that changing your ways, changing your ways, accepting Jesus Christ as the Lord and Savior, abandoning your, the, the ways of the world, and now choosing to live a life of following His ways. So that was repentance means. So it all, it all begins by, first of all, you ought to have received Jesus Christ as the Lord and Savior. Then the next thing is be baptized by water. And so if you like to uh, receive the righteousness of God, <laughs> if you see, like to be the nation of God through in, in Christ, yes, repeat this prayer after me. Our Father, our dear God, I'm grateful for this wonderful time you have given unto me to hear your word. And now I do believe that Jesus Christ died on the cross for my sins. For I'm a sinner in need of a savior. I welcome you, Jesus Christ, into my life to be my Lord and my Savior. For I have decided to follow Jesus, not turning back. By your blood, I have been cleansed. By your blood, all my sins, sins have been washed away. I am now a new creation. The old is gone and the new is come. Now, God, you are my Father. Jesus, you are my Savior. Holy Spirit, you are my helper. For I have decided to follow you, not turning back. I do believe that you have come into my life into my heart and now i live a life of dining with me these are prayer of faith that i pray in the name of the lord jesus christ amen 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 if you pray that short prayer uh i would really like to hear from you so just uh leave a comment there or text me or however you want to reach out to me just do it so shalom shalom till next time may the lord bless you